Canada's Wonderland for f over 40 years. In fact, since it opened. I've never been to its bus terminal, which is just behind me. That was kind of a unique experience in that uh, little shelter, which is really just for employees because it's a bit far off the beaten path. And this particular vlog is gonna be one of those. But this is definitely my final vlog here from the park, as unfortunately, uh, the channel is gonna move on to different sort of content. Wonderland will still feature at various times, but not in a vlog form. We don't have much of a uh, planned out day today to uh, disclose other than the fact that I'm gonna try to get on some of the rides that I have it this season. That would include Sledgehammer, Whitewater Canyon, and Timberwolf Falls. And since I've done every other flat in the park, I would say that all that would be left is a smattering of roller coasters that you could probably predict, including the highlight right before us here. tell of course is of this particular area the Leviathan is built on because for those of us that were here before Leviathan existed we will know it as the family sort of picnic area island right in front of the main entrance to the park now with all these trees and such that were located in this area however it did allow for some shenanigans at the gate let's say uh, which is long unfortunately missed you know nothing but uh, wholesome activities in this particular area back in the 80s and 90s early 2000s but uh, yeah it was just a unique feature to this park that is long gone and as you can see that is the pathway that used to lead to that particular area so you do not get quite a feel of the foresty aspect or the woodland aspect of Wonderland anymore even though, thankfully, it still exists here. I'm not really sure they really need to have this area closed off, but it is many years now. Well, it's a midsummer's day here in Wonderland, and I don't generally come here during this season, so it'll be an interesting day to say the least. Like I said, I don't really desperately need to get on many rides today. days of when I came here this photo booth which is a uh, old-time photos I actually utilized this in its opening year this is one of the few souvenir stands that actually dates from the opening of the park still and the Moroccan Bazaar obviously has been here since day one as well but is completely underused a couple years back it was the anniversary store for the 40th but now it just sits dormant unfortunately we could not of course not start without coming here to the former location of course of Zumba Flume where its entrance used to be and is now flight deck which uh, has long been lamented the loss of and on a day like today we could certainly use a water ride but unfortunately that one has not been available for many years and another water ride that is in, was located in this area too that I remember and being here for the opening of which will hit in a second on the other side of here Grand World Expo. Thank you. 
this sight gets a lot of people excited as Time Warp is not open right now. And one can only suspect that maybe, maybe, based on that survey that everybody's talking about, that this ride may be due for a demolishing. In fact, a lot of enthusiasts seem to have been coming here lately this season to get a ride on what they consider the worst roller coaster in the world. It's not the worst I've ridden, but uh, I've actually been on a decent Volare at Coney Island, oddly enough. I've come here to the original entrance of Kingswood Music Theatre. This place meant a lot to me as a kid and I've said it in many documentaries about the park that in the 80s, or say the early part of the 80s, leading into the early part of the 90s, some of the most significant acts to ever roll through town of Toronto, well really Vaughan, Ontario, uh, we're playing at this theater, including New Order, my favorite band of all time. But uh, I did see Criss Cross here, that's not really worth bragging about, but I did see Tribe Called Quest here, I did see the Fugees here, I saw Gang of Four here, I saw Traffic for some strange reason, uh, the, the list goes on, there was many legendary acts that even at the time I didn't even know were as significant as they uh, should have been in my mind until much later in my adult life that I was like, wow, thank, thanks I went, thankfully I went to that show because I saw that band. Uh, it used to be a great package, a very cheap ticket to get in, and unfortunately, completely gone from the concept of theme park and amusement park entertainment in the modern era. As a lot of these King's Entertainment uh, parks had these theaters attached to the parks, well, actually, I think every single one of them did, and it was a key component to the entertainment option here. Unfortunately, it seems like the park might be going back to that original idea now with what's going to be built around here over the next couple of years. But, unfortunately, Kingswood will certainly not be part of that as they're already starting to dismantle the roof of the facility. As many enthusiasts will know, this area seems to be maybe earmarked for development in the future. There's just a lot of land behind there. So, hopefully, we'll have something to say about that maybe in a many years' time. Lots of screams going on. I got Cyclone next door. It's not that busy here today, so I might go on a couple of rides before we carry on the vlog here. I'm about to go to the water rides. I just got off a ton of Twister, also Yukon Striker, and Cliffhanger. All back to back. Yukon just actually opened up. The operations have been decent today, but it is pretty hot. Um, and some of the rides are just kind of getting up and running now uh, after the noon time. It's hard to believe it's only noon right now. And I've been in the park for a couple hours or an hour and a half. Despite my Starbucks experience, uh, the rides have been able to get on pretty quickly, so that's been nice. There are some longer lines for, say, Mindbuster and Leviathan that I've seen across the way from my Yukon ride. Uh, but other than that, it was very good. Uh, excellent ride also on Yukon. Excellent ride on Cliffhanger. Tundra Twister, I'm not so sure. It's not better than um, Star Voyager, I'm afraid, at a certain park down the road. 
So yeah, a little underwhelming. I did do the, the uh, far left seat facing um, the water park or Splash Works, which I hadn't done yet. But yeah, it's just not that great. It, deserves, it needs a little bit more speed. Only got upside down once coming down uh, towards the ground, uh, towards the end of the cycle. Yeah, it's uh, it just doesn't leave me with quite as big of a sensation as I was expecting. That ride that just went by definitely does. So Whitewater Canyon is on a 30 minute wait. Still one of the best rafting attractions because the waterfalls are running. Uh, as many of you may know in the recent past this feature was not actually functioning but now look at it it's really back to its former opening day glory now uh, yeah due to that weight I do not anticipate in fact I know I'm not going on Whitewater Canyon today regretfully I've decided to go see a film a rather major one that's opening just down the road here so enjoy the shots One main reason though that I uh, wanted to come here to discuss something is the uh, there used to be a former viewing area down here as you can notice that was close up to the water uh, and I believe that there used to be cannon features there but it is long out of commission. But this area here where the action theater is in the distance in the trees, if you look at the concept art for the Ghost Town Coaster, I believe it's called. It's not a Ghost Town Coaster, but it's something else like that. But I honestly think that that proposal, based on the trajectory of Whitewater Canyon, as I realized as I walked in here, that it would be located entirely in this section where that theater is, and then to the right. We'll get a better piece, uh, a better look at the land over on this side. But as you can see, there's a lot of real estate you know we don't really want to lose the trees but i will also say most of these trees are not that old if you look at them they're the better part of the uh, beginnings of the park so around 40 years old but you can see what i mean here we're actually doing work in the theater on the other side and the doors are open but this whole area could be where that Zambezi Zinger clone or pretty close to type of GCI track family style wood coaster that they have just opened at Worlds of Fun could easily be here. As you can see this whole area here, I honestly think this is earmarked for that development. There's certainly enough space in there for a station and then beyond without the theater you've got your ghost town right in this location. Perfectly nestled and situated in an area of the park that needs a little bit of activity. As you can see beyond there in those trees, that's a lot of land and real estate that's unused. So I'm gonna go ahead and predict that this may be the spot that gets development next, despite everybody's wishes for a launch coaster. I've been this wet since I was in Edmonton at World Water Park for a completely different vlog. Check it out. So that's Timberwolf done. Lives up to expectation every time. Really soaked in the back seat. Um, fortunately, not all the way through.
Riptide and we're all done with the park today so I'm making my way out this is the shortest vlog ever um, it is a bit busier it's a Tuesday it is late July so you would expect it to be a fair amount of busy but it's not even one o'clock so it's definitely gonna be busier later on today so we're gonna get out of here uh, it's very weird only getting on the one major coaster but uh, those are the brakes uh, I did manage however to get on Riptide Riptide Riptide. I can never remember the name of that ride. For some reason, Cliffhanger. I just love that Sylvester Stallone movie so much, I just keep calling it Cliffhanger. It's Riptide. If you've been lucky enough to have been on Talacan, you don't really need to go on that ride because it's not that exciting at all. Uh, we did get a bit of a spray from the uh, on the second cycle going over, uh, which is kind of surprising because the jets didn't actually come up to the point where it's supposed to when they're like right in your face. So sadly, uh, yeah, the cycle was a little underwhelming and the ride overall was a little underwhelming considering Cliffhanger, Sledgehammer, whatever it's called across the way, uh, was an excellent ride today. So I'm gonna wrap things up, make my way outside and we'll see you in a bit. All right, that's the day done. Very short one. Uh, it's been three visits this year so far. It's been a very casual day. It actually was pretty decent. The crowd was well behaved. Lots of families today. Uh, it's a little hot. It's $17.49 for a funnel cake. You'll never see me eat one on this channel, but I figured I might as well update you and tell you exactly the real talk about, hello, um, the funnel cake situation in case you're interested. That all being said, yes. I'm getting a little too old to come to Wonderland on my own. I'm getting a little bored with Wonderland, having done all the rides now except for Whitewater Canyon. Uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like there's much of a reason for me to come back. So we're going to go to other parks, hopefully in the future, uh, and let this one be enjoyed by the many enthusiasts that cover it almost on a daily basis. Look for my review of the park overall where I'll be covering some of those things uh, from an operational standpoint and some of the things that I've noticed over this year and the couple that I've been coming here at least as a semi-professional vlogger. But for now, that's all guys. Thank you for dropping in. It's been quite a journey, quite a ride. Uh, it seems like it's a bittersweet end uh, to the vlogging experience here. But who knows, maybe in the future I'll be back for a different reason. Thanks for dropping in, guys.